and the United Nations' ability to protect them. In regards to the international community, a stranger will never find you a solution in your own country. But since our independence, we've never been given a chance to govern ourselves without interference from the outside. June 30th, 1960, independence comes to the Belgian Congo. King Baudouin himself flies to the capital city of Leopoldville to break the bonds that have linked his country and its African colony for 75 years. L'objectif que nous poursuivons, c'est la libération du Congo du régime colonialiste. C'est l'émancipation totale du pays. Lumumba the first prime minister of Congo was a nationalist, but the Americans thought he had communist tendencies. The Russians had backed Lumumba, given military and other aid, as the East vied with West to gain influence in the Congo. For the Americans, during the Cold War, they had to find a man to get rid of Lumumba. And that is how they thought of Mobutu. In the army, he was known as the most brilliant. Colonel Mobutu forced the Russians to close their embassy, leave the Congo. Mobutu was used by the CIA. He served the capitalists to the detriment of communism. The new chapter begins in the dark and tragic history of the Congo with the return to Leopoldville of deposed Premier Lumumba, following his capture by crack commandos of strongman Colonel Mobutu. Here you see him on his third arrest one from which he went to a mysterious death. With the support of the Americans, Mobutu imposed a dictatorship for 32 years. I grew up during that time. When he came into power, in the beginning, I must say he was good. The economy of the country was strong, very strong. The Congo produced many university graduates and the world respected many of these Congolese. At least in those years, Congo was still moving forward a bit. Then, all of a sudden, he rebaptized the Congo with the name of Zaire. A Republic of Zaire! <laughs> Almost everything changed. While he remained a vital ally to the West, he expelled all the foreign investors that were here. When they left, all the factories, all the big plantations were acquired by Mobutu's colleagues, but they did not know how to run them. There were no executives. Businessmen were replaced by inadequate people. Money was embezzled. And where does corruption? Development can't exist. Mobutu looted his country's diamond and copper mines. He pocketed international aid. Even officers were housed in this slum, just a few kilometers away from President Mobutu's opulent lakeside villa. That same system of corruption has become a Congolese tradition, and it is even worse today. <laughs> 